What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another view. This time we're taking a look at A Serious Man, written and directed by the Coen brothers. A Serious Man tells the story of Arthur Guffman, who is a Minnesota family man whose life is crumbling around him both personally and professionally, and it leads him to start questioning his faith, his Jewish faith. That is the overall basic plot line of A Serious Man. Let's talk about it. I think A Serious Man is a really good movie. I think the Coen brothers did a really good job at blending in dark humor, which is what was, which is what I'm a big fan of, and all and giving it a, and drum and drama and drama. Oh, I'm getting all tongue tied. This is a comedy drama with black humor elements to it, and the Coen brothers mix both these genres to sheer perfection with this movie. Uh, this movie is great. I think this movie has a very has a lot of real funny bits to it. Uh, it just seen the unfortunate events of Larry. The Coen brothers handled it with, in a way where it's 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 comical, but not overly comical. It, it plays out like a series of unfortunate events that happened to this poor guy, and I think Michael Stahlberg, who is the lead, who plays Larry Goffman, does an absolutely incredible job with this movie. Uh, Michael Stahlberg is not your typical leading man when it comes to movies. He he looks like a guy who you would be next door's neighbors with if you were in the suburbs. But in this movie, I think Stahlberg handled the role really, really well. I think he he really gives off the impression of a suburban man who is trying to be a quote-unquote serious man but can't seem to figure out why his life is, is, is kicking him in the ass. And I think Stahlberg balances out these different emotions, these different uh, emotions really, really well. Uh, you know, he has to balance out his family life, which is crumbling, which is crumbling before him. You know, his wife wants to get a divorce because she's falling in love with a family friend named Sal, named Sly Abelman, played by Fred Mulliman. And I actually thought that the performance that Fred Mulliman performed as Sly Abelman was actually pretty funny, because even though he's born, he's messing around with the man's wife, he still acts like he and Larry are best friends. It's hilarious. It's like to Sly, it's like Larry, Larry. We can get through this. And Larry's just like, What? <laughs> it's great. That's where the comedy comes in. You know, Larry's life is falling apart. And everyone around him is just so casual about it. it, it that's where the comedy really comes in with this movie. It's great. Uh, and this, this, the comedy is further explored when Larry starts to like visit these three, these three rabbis to try and get answers and to try and see if his faith is in, and trying to see why his faith is being tested. You know, one rabbi compares Larry's predicament to a parking lot, which is hilarious. Another rabbi tells the story of some dentist, which goes absolutely nowhere, which is also a really funny scene. And the third rabbi. The man by Marshak, who this movie has built, was building up, has built, was building up for its entire runtime. Uh, when Larry tries to go see the rabbi Mashnik, Rash, Mashach, he is busy and has no time for Lawrence. Of course, when we finally get to the end of the movie, we finally get to see Rabbi Mashach when Larry's son Danny goes to see him after his bar, as bar, his uh, bar mitzvah. And he starts, and he just quotes Jefferson Airplane. It's hilarious stuff. It's great. Uh, yeah, all that stuff is great. Uh, the supporting cast in this movie is really solid. You have Richard Kind, who plays Larry's brother Arthur. I thought Richard Kind in this movie he was fine, though. I though his though the brother character doesn't get, doesn't get all that much screen time. I thought Richard Kind was fine in the scenes that he was in, and I actually would have liked to have seen more scenes between uh, Kind and Stallworth because I think they had an untapped chemistry with one another. They do have some scenes where they play off each other really really well. Uh, I already said that Fred Mulliman, he was one of my, he has another good supporting role in this movie. Uh, the chemistry between Mulliman and Stahlberg in a lot of the scenes, it, uh, and again, that's where the comedy comes in, it's good stuff. Uh, the actress who plays the wife, I thought she was fine. The two actors who played the kids, I thought they were fine in the roles themselves, but I think the kids are a little bit of annoying, don't serve no purpose, with the exception of the son, who serves a little bit of a purpose, since his bar mitzvah is what pretty much gives Larry some inspiration to his life. life so the son character kind of plays more of a role than his sister character does but the son has this kind of go nowhere subplot where he owes some bully money for buying weed off of him so in terms of subplot the son doesn't serve any purpose but when you get close to the end he kind of does serve some sort of a purpose so yeah, the son is like a mixed bag the daughter on the other hand she's just there to be the older sibling who is constantly annoyed by her brother so yeah she doesn't really add much to the story to be honest with you uh, 
for this movie. The, the three actors who played the rabbis, I thought they were funny in their own way. Even though, even the rabbi Marshak, even though he doesn't have any more speaking lines, it's just the way the movie built him up and the way the movie uh, utilizes him. That's what's hilarious. You know, when, when Larry first tries to see the rabbi, the reception is like, the rabbi is busy. He's thinking. And Larry's like, he didn't look busy. Funny stuff. And again, the two other guys for the rabbi, the junior, the junior rabbi and the other rabbi who told the dentist story, I thought they were fine in their roles as well. I thought they handled their humor really, really well as well. Good stuff. Um, the dream sequences that Larry has, they further... You, further, you get more of a deep dive into the man's psyche as to wh and, and what's going on with him to the point where he fantasizes about having an affair with his next door neighbor and then he's constantly having visions of threat of, uh, of Sly Abelman pretty much taunting him uh, with, the, with this one hilarious scene where, where Sly is banging Larry's head against a chalkboard when he's saying, I slept with your wife, I fucked her, I fucked her. It's funny. It's hilarious stuff. And then you have this really dark dream where... Uh, where uh, where Larry and his brother are pretty much killed by a couple of hunters while going while canoeing in Canada. That's a kind of a that was a dark scene near the end of the movie, but it was handled really well and it, and it fits into Larry's psyche. And Larry also has this other subplot about a student who's constantly harassing him to change his grade to the point where his father bribes him money. And this is all, another conflict that Larry wrestles with. Like this poor man is going through so much, and nobody and he can't get no answers as to why his life is so unfair to him. When he tried to be a serious man and do good by his community, he still gets shit on. It's great stuff. It, it's, it's A serious man is a character study that tests the kindness of one person to the point where they start to question, of all the good things I've done, why, why is all this happening to me? That's what a serious man is really about. And it's great. And I like it for it. It's good stuff. Uh, now, if I do have one major, major flaw with this movie, aside from the kids... This movie has a prologue that's set in the 19th century that focuses on a Jewish family that takes in a, uh, another man to, for dinner and soup. Uh, the wife ends up killing this person since she says that, the, that, the, that who the man is supposedly is died a long time ago. Now, I paid attention to this movie. I have now seen it three times. And I do not know how this prologue plays into the rest of this movie. I still don't understand how this prologue connects to this movie. Um, excuse me. For me, I think this prologue is kind of confusing. Because I don't know how it connects to the movie. I don't know how this little segment of the movie relates to Larry and his character and what he's, go and what he's going through. So to me, I think the prologue is kind of unnecessary. Just for me, maybe to someone else they can piece it together, but to me, I think the prologue is unnecessary because I don't know what it means and I don't know what the Coen brothers were going for. Uh, maybe I'm not thinking too deep into it. Maybe there is a connection, but me personally, I don't know. So with that said, I don't care for the prologue of this movie that focuses on this 19th century Jewish family. But once you get past that prologue, which I'm still confused about, doesn't know how it relates to the movie, the rest of the movie is great. Like, almost great, almost perfection. So, so, with all that being said, I'm going to give a serious man a solid 9 out of 10. The prologue I don't care for, and the kids I'm not, I'm not huge fans of in terms of characters, but the rest of this movie is great. If you've never seen this movie, I highly recommend it. It is really damn good. So yeah, those are my thoughts on a serious man. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Like this video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.